First of all, I would like uh, the Cassandra Fernanda, the federal MP, uh, to be on the stage, and uh, we have prepared a gift for you, for uh, your uh, encouraging support for our diverse community, and just to say thank you for uh, your assistance. ما برای آقای جولیان هی یک چپنی وطنی مد نظر گرفتیم به خاطر از اینکه ایشان در واقع ارتقا پیدا کردن دستیار وزیر شدن و همیشه کمک هایی که برای کمیونیتی مد نظر دارن و کسایی که مراجع کردن کمک کردن به او خاطر I'm, I'm just trying to explain uh, about the history of Japan, uh, which is, uh, you know, we have prepared a Japan for you, Julian. And it is uh, a traditional uh, uh, action in uh, our culture that when someone is promoted to a higher position, and also to say thank you for your support and encouraging the community to, to be helpful and to be together. So we have... Uh, uh, prepared a, a chapan for uh, Mr. Julian Hill for being promoted as a assistant minister and also help for the diverse community here. Thank you very much. That is a really great honour and I really, really appreciate it. It's great to be back in Dandenong after a week in Canberra. I got back about 4.30 this afternoon. I won't speak for long, but just want to make a couple of points. Firstly, to acknowledge the incredible range of council candidates. I think it's a wonderful thing that people are having a crack. Um, ultimately, the, the most important thing to get a good council is that we have a range of good candidates who can do the job. And it's fantastic to see everyone in one place. I've seen you all individually, but really big congratulations. Can I also acknowledge you, Hyatt, and the Omid Association? I think it's almost 10 years since we first met when I was a candidate and then when I was elected in 2016. Uh, it was this man, Hyatt Rahimi, though, who opened my eyes as a quiet, effective community leader to the problems that the community was then having with the delays to citizenship applications in particular and partner visas. And I thought, oh, well, this is an easy problem. It's outrageous. We should fix it. Little did I know that we were going to be fighting about this for six long years under the former government. I'm really pleased, though, that now as a minister in the Home Affairs Department, we've been able to clear out all of those old cases that were some people waiting 10 years for their citizenship. <laughs> We've granted more than 18,000 of the 19,000 people on TPVs and CHEVs who now have permanent protection. We've cleaned out more than five, 7,000 people who've been waiting for more than five years for their partner visa and they're now being able to, they've been reunited with their kids. And there's still more work to do. I won't go through all of it now, but I really just want to pay tribute to your quiet work and advocacy. It's been incredibly tough at times. I know for community leaders dealing with people in trauma separated from their families, and also for me and Cassandra and our staff who do the very best we can, but we have made an enormous difference. And uh, the final thing, of course, is the humanitarian program. And I know so many people here are still worried about loved ones right around the world. We've raised the humanitarian program, we've increased it to 20,000. People from Afghanistan are still the largest share of the humanitarian program, but even then, there's still more than 150,000 people, many of whom will never be able to get a visa. That's how the humanitarian program works. So I just want to acknowledge the difficulty for people. We do everything we can, and you know it's not a time for politics, we'll talk about that next year, but the alternative government's only promise in migration is to cut the partner visa program and cut the humanitarian program. That's Peter Dutton's only migration policy that he's made, which is a shocker. shocker. 
Um, the final thing I just want to say on a happier note about tonight, when you come to this country, no one expects you to leave your culture at the door. Actually the opposite. What our country wants, expects and needs is you to celebrate your culture, to pass on traditions, languages, faith to your children, but most importantly, to share that with others. So I really want to thank you for inviting us in. We've been whispering away getting the translations. And I was saying that, um, Moj, where's Moj? Mojgan's over there. Um, Moj, as a great example, was captain of Dandenong High School. I was just about finished her law degree. She'll probably go on and run the world as a barrister or something. Um, but we're very lucky that she's been working with us for some years. Moj is only failing as she hasn't taught me to speak Dari. So we blame you. It's nothing to do with me, of course, being too busy to learn. But it is a beautiful language to listen to. So I really want to thank you for having us along tonight. Thank you. Salam, everyone. And uh, thank you, Julian, uh, for that great speech. Um, as Ju Julian has um, said before, it's the Labor government that brings families together. And I'll be very honest with each and every one of you, when Peter Dutton talked about immigrants, I'm one of them in Parliament. I'm the first Sri Lankan born in federal Parliament. I get very angry because that means that I won't get to see my family and that means my constituents, who are mostly made up of, uh, my constituency is mostly made up of migrants. That means they can't be reunited with their families. So sitting on the other side and listening to that breaks my heart in more ways than one because we're all migrants. But I would also like to start off by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we meet, pay my respects to the elders past, present and emerging. I would also like to acknowledge General Murad over there and all the other community leaders. I feel like I'm a part of this big Afghan family. I feel beyond blessed to be a part of your family. Thank you, Hyatt Rahimi, for inviting me for this wonderful poetry night and music night organised by Omed Cultural Association. It is a privilege to be with you all to celebrate the power of art to bring people together. Poetry is one of the most oldest and most profound forms of human expressions. Long before man-made tools or written pain or paint, we had our voices. Voices to share our emotions, tell stories, and capture the essence of experiences. It is a testament to the power of words and rhyme carried through the ages. Wherever there is religion or spirituality, you will find poetry. From the Christian Gaelic poetry of Ireland to the ancient Vedic hymns of India and the elegant Kudas spread across the Islamic world. Poetry transcends borders and unites us all in a very important experience. It is a way to preserve, promote and celebrate culture no matter where you are or who we are. Poetry and music have always held a special place in my heart. Many of you might not know this unless you come to my whole Harmony Gala, but I'm a classically trained singer so when I was 12 years old, when we came to Australia at the age of 11, my mum put me to singing classes and it has borne me so much joy over the years. Um, it speaks to me in more ways than one. When people say to me, hey Cassandra, I have never seen you angry. I've never seen you in a bad mood. Guess what? It's music. It's poetry that gets me through every single day. I listen to my um, religious poetry a lot. I'm very religious, I don't hide that, um, because I think religious is very religion is very important to each person. So I sing a lot of my um, Jesus songs while I'm driving the car. If any of you see me, I'm singing, you know, I'm praising God, right? But um, I see all your work every single day. I see how dedicated each of you are, especially the community leaders. A lot of people don't know this, but the community leaders that are in this room, they message me, they call me. If it's one of you guys that go to them and ask them for help, guess what? These people around this room, they contact me and say, Cassandra, can you help me? Um, 25 years ago, uh, I don't know if you guys know this, if you haven't been here this long, Danny Nong wasn't like this. 
right? So when we were growing up, there was one Sri Lankan shop, Colombo. I think it's still there, but I don't go to Colombo anymore. Um, that was the only Sri Lankan shop. And everything closed at about 9 o'clock or 8 o'clock in Daninol. The first Afghan shop opened up, right? Sri Lankans, we eat late. It's not normal for us to eat at 6 o'clock or 7 o'clock. We eat dinner at 9, 9.30. When the first Afghan kebab shop opened, my brother and I were so happy because they were open till late. If I look around this room, Daninol, the southeastern suburbs, have changed so much because there are people that look like me now. And I'm very blessed to watch the southeastern suburbs grow with multiculturalism. I'm also very fortunate to have two Hazara uh, people working in my office. Hafiz Jan. So Hafiz Jan is one of the most senior uh, staffers in the federal parliament, and uh, I'm very lucky to have him. I also have Naveed Jafari, who's not here today. He's working. Um, so I'm very lucky to have these two people in my office to advise me about the Hazara culture, the Afghan culture, um, and they tell me what is happening. Um, in your country. Just a couple of days ago, I think yesterday it was, that I spoke about uh, what's happening to the Afghan women. My heart breaks a thousand times over and I will never stop speaking about what's happening in your country. And I, keep, I will keep doing it until something is done because you have given me this platform to be a voice for you and I will continue to do that. So I want to say thank you so much for having such a wonderful event and bringing people together from all walks of life. So have a wonderful night. Take care. Thank you.